Good morning, Overload Nation. Adrian here, and I want to tell you quickly about the history of gaming, and that it ought to be preserved. I'm 21, and I've been playing games since roughly 1998. And some of you, some of you might know, after watching my, my my about me video or my story, I used to play on the PS1, Sega Genesis, the Game Boy Color. Before I went on to the Xbox original, and then the GameCube, and the 360, and now, since around 2009, generally it's been the PC. So really, because I've been playing the game so long, I've played a lot of games. Echo the Dolphin, some Mickey Mouse games, a lot of Spy a lot of Spider-Man games, love Spider-Man. Um, some Wario Land, Pokemon, Rugrats on the PS1. Wow, hello, Jet Set Radio Future, do you remember that? Halo 1, 2, 3, not, not played 4 though. Halo Wars... Wow, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, Soul Blade, Army Men, Air Attack, Driver, Scooby Doo, Cyber Chase, Star Wars Episode 1. Uh, loads, loads, probably about 100 plus games, Armed and Dangerous, Fable, loads. I have a whole collection. But the point is, to save the heritage, because if we don't have the history of games, whether from a gamer point of view or a game developer point of view, then we, you know, we're going to repeat the mistakes of previous games and what went wrong with them as well as as well as um it's worthwhile collecting games physical copies because one it's just beautiful and amazing to have the physical copy in your hand there's like a vibrational power to it that digital just cannot compete with whether streaming or copy and paste folder or on a steam or whatever it's just physical just is no there's no competition no questions asked and I have a collection of around 100, I think it's about 90 or so Xbox original games and about 10 or 12 GameCube games. Loads. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. We're talking like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, Legend of Zelda the Collection series for the GameCube. We're talking Star Wars Road Leader. We're talking Fable, Halo, um, X111 or 13. We're talking... Oh wow, it's pirates. We're talking, I can't remember all of them. Loads of games that I played or wanted to play back in the day or could never afford to, or games that I just never played in general. Because in the future, I, I personally think that Steam or other other such online platforms might not be around 10, 15 years from now. So to have the physical copy, it's like um, not relying on a third party, in this case DRM, in order to play the game. You know, as long as the console still works and TV still use SCART, which I'm sure there's ways to repair consoles, and or you can find them cheap anyway right now. But also, I'm sure there's ways you can can convert SCART to HDMI or such. Because I doubt, I somewhat doubt this will. I think I think somewhat doubt that TVs not being able to support SCART will happen quicker and sooner before Sky before Steam goes away. So to continue, uh, so to Collect the old games is good because in the future when things go down you can always play and not relying on servers or or a third party in order to play the game. But also it's just heritage in general. I mean like 50, year, 50 years from now you want to be able to play these games. When I'm retired, you know, I want to play some of these games that I played in my childhood. Has that nostalgia? And you're not going to get that so much when you can, when you've got dozens of games at like one one dollar or one quid and that's it, you know? You're not going to get that. So I think it's worthwhile collecting games for the heritage, for the history and nostalgia. That's why I've collected the games. I'm urging you to do the same as well. Don't trade your physical copies in. That hurts the industry, actually. Trading physical, physical, trading physical copies in means that the game developers actually don't make any money on that transaction. Because when you buy a game brand new, the developer earns money, there's royalties on the game, the publisher has a share of that, and the retailer. But when you sell... When you resell a game back to the retailer, it, that profits are entirely within the retailer's hands. And when they buy, when they sell a second-owned game, they make those profits. I don't mind buying pre-owned games because it means I'll take them out of circulation then, rather than trade them back in. But you know, uh, buying and selling second-hand games hurts the industry. So I don't mind taking, I don't mind buying them. Take it out of circulation, you know, buy it and never sell it and never get rid of it. Keep it, then build a collection, which is awesome. 
But, you know, I think it's worthwhile collecting and storing games for the future for your family as well, for nostalgia, especially when it comes to retirement. One day you will look back and think, oh, I want to play XYZ game. Oh, great times, great times. I'm, I'm doing that now. How cool is that? So, yes, uh, if you have any comments, questions or queries, comments below. Uh, comment them below. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't already. More videos to come.